It's Dr. Lori. I'm at the Junietta Valley Home and Garden Show. My art and antique appraisal event is about to start. Let's see what they've got. Princess Diana Beanie Baby. Do you have a million of these in tubs? You know, big plastic tubs from Walmart, millions of Beanie Babies, and they're all in plastic bags, and they're all in perfect condition, and they're all worth bajillions of dollars. Do you have that? Just one? You have several. Not a bunch like that. A lot of people have a lot of Beanie Babies, and when we were on lockdown during 2020, most people, came, the Beanie Babies came out of the woodwork because we finally cleaned out attics, basements, garages, and storage units. Because we had three months at home, we were like, what are we going to do? We might as well clean the place. And everybody thought, a lot of people in the market, especially in art and antiques and collectibles, thought there's no more Beanie Babies out there. There can't be. Ha, 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 ha. And if they are out there, they're in terrible condition. Ha, 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 ha. Also not true. They were out there. They were stored. Kids, were, kids in the 90s were not allowed to play with them. Forget it. You got one. They bought it. It went into the tub. Don't touch it. I can't tell you. I've talked to America about Beanie Babies. I'm the expert on these. And let me tell you something. A lot of things come into, a lot of criteria for value. The actual, the type of little, this little plastic piece, what type did you get? Did you get a thick one? Did you get a thick one? Did you get a red one? Did you get a white one? All of that may, impacts value. Then you have to have a certain ribbon. Then you have to have, of course, the different type of um, generation of the tag. Then you have to make sure there are no creases on the tag. Then you have to look at pellet deterioration. Then you have to assess what type of material was made and then where it was made. Was it made in Indonesia? Was it made in China? Was it made in another part of the world? Then you have to look at the tush tag. That's this tag. Then you have to see whether or not this tag actually has the correct information on it. Does it say princess? Is it really from 1997? Does it have PE pellets? Does it have PVC pellets? Does it have a little quality control factory mark, right? A little stamp like you get on your hand. Do you have one of those stamps? That impacts value. Oh my goodness, you wouldn't believe what impacts value. How much do you think your Princess Diana Beanie Baby is worth right now today? Okay, so say you paid $5 for it in 1997, right? Okay, so this particular piece today has a lot of criteria that we have to look into to evaluate it. There's information all over the internet, and let me tell you, some of it's true, some of it's not. A lot of information on the internet is not true. Here's one. I'm 125 pounds on the internet. <laughs> let me tell you, not true. Same type of information is being tossed around about Beanie Babies and specifically this one. Because Princess Diana's Beanie Baby, which was this one was handmade in China with PE pellets, this particular one is one of many, many out there that are similar. Oh, they're worth $1,000. Oh, they're worth $20,000. Oh, one sold for $550,000. You can buy a house with your Beanie Baby. Not anywhere in America, <laughs> you know? Maybe underground you could, but not here. <laughs> so this particular piece is like many of the other ones that you would have seen. And value on this one, only because of this one. It's condition, which is fair, and other elements, this particular one's worth about 50 bucks. When was it worth more? You missed the anniversary of Princess Diana's death, which was August of 2022, was the 25th anniversary of her death. If you sold it then, you would have gotten a lot more money for it. You got to know when to sell it. That's what I teach you in my selling classes. So that piece, nice. Put it back in the thing. Put it back in the tub with the other ones. And read my website, which has a list of the most valuable ones. So if you've got a big tub of them, that will help you. What have we got here? A lot of things happening. Secretary's tray with this to open letters. That's called scroll work, scroll not work. antlers. You see that they're leaves? Okay. Scroll okay. work. A pen goes here. So the pen's lost. Never with it. And you've got, got some monograms here in the shield, like the coat of arms. Grand Army. The Grand Army of the Republic. Okay. There's a plaque on the front which says, well, you got to have me come over there now. Okay, I got to move my big body over here. Step over the big thing that I don't want to trip off. Hazards. Let's see, where else are we? Oh, God, Lord. Okay, hold on. Excuse my backside. It's not. It's bad. <laughs> 1899 is what it says. Okay. To blah, 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 in Boston, blah, 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 blah. Uh, a divided house. Okay, got it. Okay. Boston, 1899. So the two helmets uh, contain ink wells, and then it also has the, the burnisher, so basically you get rid of all of the... So if I open these, this is going to have an inkwell. Yeah, as expected. Andrew is a man of his word. And this one, too. And 
That one doesn't want to, oh, there we go. Okay, and then this comes down to reveal the clock. Right. It's kind of impressive, it is, don't you it? think? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of cool. And this comes up so you can check the time, and otherwise it just sits on your very massive desk. Exactly. So you've got to have a desk like when I appraise Thomas Jefferson's writing desk. Yeah. That one, like a desk like that, massive. Hazards. <laughs> okay? How did you acquire it? Look at the guild work. Look at the constructed metal. Look at the fact that we have, of course, the patination all over the piece. Let me tell you a little bit about the history. First of all, you've got a nice piece, late 19th century, early 20th century, just before the Spanish-American War. So that's one of the things that you're going to see. You're going to see um, this particular piece is in very good condition. It has most of its parts, like most of us. How many of us have most of our parts, right? That's what we're looking for. I don't like the fact that you don't have the crystal. I do like the fact that you've got a hand-painted Roman numerals on, of course, the porcelain face. I would like to know whether or not it runs. You're saying you don't remember. Do you have a key? Might be inside. Maybe inside there might be a key. I think that these works are German and I think the rest of it is made in the United States, and value on the piece in this condition, about $3,500 to about $4,000. Okay. So that's nice. <laughs> it's a nice piece, but historic, unusual, rare, and if it had this particular piece, if it had the crystal that's missing, I'd be looking at another 250 bucks for it. How about a ship? Yay. So let's take a look at this painting. Did you look at the staples at the back when you bought it? Did you see these staples right here up against the stretcher bar? See how light the stretcher is? The stretcher bar is very light. See how the staples here? See the light color of the canvas? See the light color even of the Mexican-made frame wood? So light, 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 dark. You know where I'm going with this? This is my mother's age spot. I inherited it. You know how you inherited something from your mother or your family over there? This is what I inherited, this age spot right here. Dark, age. It got darker as I got older. You know, once I hit 26, 27, which was, what, two years ago? <laughs> darker. No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> light, 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 light means it's young. Okay? So it's a nice painting, but it's a young painting. How young is young? Well, it doesn't matter what you painted. We want to see what you paid yet. So you're saying you paid $6. Here's the $6 mark on it. How old is it by the frame? When you see a wooden frame like this and an insert, this is called a runner of textile, and then also another piece of wood in here, how old do you think the frame is? If you had to put it into a decade, the 1970s, the 1980s, the 1990s, the... This is probably the 1970s, okay? So 50 years old, rather young getting younger every day, let me tell you. <laughs> All right. This particular piece, that's the frame, the 70s. The painting itself is even younger than that. The painting itself is probably made in the late 1990s. Looking back at paintings, high sailing ships on the high seas, those paintings date back, um, the original ones date back to the 1870s. So pretty nice. This one's 1990s, this one's 1970s, you paid $6, the whole operation is worth 75 Not bad, not bad at all. So, you know, you want to stick to that. If you can get it for 10% of what it's really worth, you can flip it, you're doing well. Okay? This piece dates to about 1920, so it was about 20 years old when he bought it in the 40s, and value on that piece today, about $50. How do we acquire this painting? And here's a compare and contrast for you. I mean, this should not be any easier. I don't think I can make it any simpler. Old, dark, new, young. You see it? Yeah, got it. He preserved a museum in Worcestershire. Oh, one of his paintings is in a museum in Worcestershire. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> Just be, let me tell you, I was a museum director, a museum curator for a long time before I started doing all this appraisal stuff. And even during while I was doing this appraisal stuff, I worked for museums. Let me tell you this. The best stuff is not in museums. It's not always in museums. Well, I'm not saying this isn't the best thing, but people think, oh, it must be really high value if it's in a museum. Usually it's historical. It may or may not be of high value. And then it has to do with who's supporting the museum and what have they got. Okay? So it's not always automatically, oh, it's in a museum. Yay, everything's terrific. Okay? Not to burst your bubble, Tom. Okay? 
So first of all, we want to maintain that this piece is really from the late 19th, early 20th century. And here are some of the things. First of all, you'll notice here that you have a European stretcher probably done in England. So he might have been trained in England or painted there at some point. You have the original keys. That's what these little shims are called, keys, which you stick into the painting, and they actually allow for that, stretch, that stretched canvas to stay taut. All right? It's very, very dark. It's probably been somewhere for a long time right up against a wall, and the wall probably was made of a masonry material. Okay? Then you have the frame. Well, then you have the painting. The painting needs a professional cleaning. I hardly ever say that. I'm always like, don't clean it, it's fine, it's fine. Your painting needs a professional cleaning. The $300 to $500 type is going to be expensive. This piece is very, very dirty and very, uh, would be much brighter. In the realistic landscape style of this time period, made famous by many artists of that time period. The frame is composition matter and wood. Composition matters like a plaster of Paris. You can see the white of the plaster of Paris coming through. And it, in fact, has been um, damaged somewhat. It's in minor damage at this point. Uh, value, first of all. The painting is probably no more than, uh, I would say, maybe 11 by 9. I don't know if you know the, me the measurements of the painting, but that's probably less than a... Maybe 8 by 10, it's less than a ruler from what I can see here from the back. And that's not the frame, that's just the painting. And what do you think it's worth? It's worth about $500 with the frame. And it is, it is signed, but the signature does not impact value all that much. Will it, will it increase value? Probably by about $250. But that depends on how good a job the guys who restore it do. They do a lousy job, that's not my fault. <laughs> So make sure you see a before and an after picture of whatever restoration work they've done before. Have you work, ask them, have you worked on paintings this age? Have you worked on this artist? Do you do the frames too? I like it when somebody else does the frame and somebody else does the painting, but that's just me. And years of experience, 25 years as a, in museums. Those are just some of the objects that I saw at the Juniata Valley Home and Garden Show outside State College, Pennsylvania.